Good morning. We are going to talk today about cloches and forcing pots. Now these are two different kinds of techniques that are used similarly, but they're a little bit different. So it's important to understand the differences and why you would use one as opposed to another. Um, a cloche is basically a clear or semi-clear plastic or glass cover that you would put over top of something outdoors to protect it from uh, the cold, to protect it from pests, uh, it can also protect it from the wind. Uh, and so this is a, a technique that's used to kind of create a microclimate around one of your plants and this will help it to start earlier and will help you to not have to worry about um, hardening it off later on. So if you're starting an annual and you want to plant it outside, you can start it underneath a cloche and that will get the, uh, the plant kind of adjusted to the outdoor temperature, but more gently. Now a cloche isn't going to protect it from every kind of weather. If it gets really cold, the cloche might not protect it, um, but it does collect solar heat during the day, heats up the ground around the plant, and will actually raise the temperature just a couple of degrees, and sometimes that's all you need to get it through a light frost. Um, so with a hard frost, it could be a different story. You can make a cloche very simply um, with just a, a plastic milk jug. And uh, I found a little suggestion online, which I thought was really helpful. I'll put the link down below to the, um, the website where I found it. But that is that if you've got uh, a milk jug that you're using, these tend to blow away very easily. If you, before you cut the bottom off, if you drill a hole in each side of the milk jug, and if you've got some landscape staples, you can stick those through and secure your milk jug in place over top of the plants that you want to protect. So that's a very simple way to create a cloche for your plants. You can keep the lid and if it's a really cold night, close it off. If you need to release some heat, release some moisture, uh, you can take off the, um, uh, the cap and that gives you a little bit of uh, uh, ability to kind of adjust the atmosphere inside. But when it's a really warm day, you're going to want to take that cloche off. The reason is you can actually cook your plants inside of a plastic or glass uh, covering. So any kind of, this is like a mini greenhouse effect that you're creating, anything like that, like a, a cold frame or a greenhouse, you always have to make sure that you're monitoring the temperature on really warm days. And so on a day like today, I'm not gonna put this over top of any of my plants because I know that it could heat them up quite a bit. This is a little different than if you're using a forcing pot. So a forcing pot is a different technique. And this technique is used to, to keep a plant a little bit warmer and to help it get started, but also to keep it from the sunlight. The reason is that this, is, this creates a, a, a blanching effect. So the, the plant will be pale, uh, the, the leaves that grow on it will be pale when you're doing this, and you can harvest them and they're a little milder. So this is often done with sea kale, which is a plant that I plant here quite a bit and also with rhubarb. It's a very popular technique for rhubarb to get the rhubarb a little earlier in the spring, but also to get it in a blanched state, so it's a paler color and, uh, and quite possibly uh, a little milder when it's done this way. I don't know. I haven't tasted uh, rhubarb that has been uh, grown in a forcing pot, so I can't honestly say what blanched rhubarb tastes like. Um, but uh, anyway, so right here you can see that I have basically an upturned flower pot and it's over top of some sea kale and you probably won't be able to see this but I'll get a, a close-up shot and give it to you later. So the sea kale underneath here is um, is still in in just sort of the bud phase, budding phase, but uh, I just put this forcing pot over it and like I said, it's really just an, a large upturned uh, flower pot. There are, there are forcing pots, I'll, I'll tell you about uh, specially made forcing pots in a minute, but, um, but what this will do is create a slightly warmer microclimate around that sea kale, and when the sea kale comes out, it will be blanched. So instead of looking dark or, well, kind of a pale green, which is what sea, sea kale usually looks like, it'll be uh, more of a, 
a whitish to yellowish uh, with a little bit of green color and the it almost more like a a celery or something except without the uh, without the strings um, and it's a it's a delicacy in Europe it's not so well known here but I think if it were better known it would be much more popular as a spring uh, vegetable so sea kale I don't always blanch my sea kale but one of the reasons that I'm doing it this year is partly to weaken the plants because blanching like this under a forcing pot will weaken the plants and some of these I'll be removing this year and replacing with new genetics because I want to have a little more diversity in my sea kale selection here so uh, so this will also help to weaken the plant which in this case is what I want but if you want to keep your plants strong too much forcing is not a good way to to keep those plants going for the long run so definitely something to consider if you're considering forcing a plant like rhubarb or sea kale you may not get as much of it later on in the season you may shorten its lifespan I don't know if that's true about rhubarb but I do know with sea kale it is definitely possible to overdo it and end up without uh, a sea kale plant if you have uh, if you forced it like this but um, eventually if you've been growing sea kale you'll be able to propagate so many plants that if you want to start forcing them like I can here it's really not a big deal um, so there are different kinds of forcing pots now I have in the past seen these for sale on um, on the Monticello website they actually have sea kale there and they have uh, they sell the equipment to grow it and forcing pots were very popular back when uh, when Jefferson was doing his uh, his sea kale uh, gardens and so it was one of his favorite vegetables and he used to like it blanched and so he would grow it under uh, under forcing pots in the spring to help create that situation so so you can see on the screen pictures of what forcing pot pots look like official you know expensive but uh, uh, but the the real forcing pots look like and you can see that they actually have a lid on them so you can look inside and close the lid afterwards for me i just cover up the the holes with something occasionally check in on them to make sure it's not too damp inside but with a ceramic pot i don't have to worry about that as much if i'm using you can also use a like a dark plastic bucket but if you're doing that you might want to just check for moisture every so often and see how that um is working um so those are sort of really the three things that I've um, I've considered using. You could also create a wooden, if you wanted to create a wooden box and put it over top, that would probably work just as well and wouldn't have moisture issues like you probably will get or possibly could get with the, the plastic variety. So that's another another option, just building boxes and weighing them down to make sure they don't go anywhere and, uh, and using those as forcing pots. So those, that's the difference between uh, uh, forcing pots and cloches. Two different techniques, both of which can extend your growing season. Definitely things to look into, and if you haven't gotten them ready this spring, you may still be able to uh, put a forcing pot over your rhubarb and give it a try. Uh, just be a little careful. Don't push your rhubarb too hard too early. And I don't know exactly what happens when you take your forcing pot off if you leave the the um, the stems exposed you may want to cut them back when you do that and then throw some mulch over top and then let it grow out with new stems so that it doesn't get sunburned by the sun because that's definitely a possibility if you were to take your forcing pot off leave the pale stems out there in the sunlight you might end up harming the plant not entirely sure about that but I'd be a little cautious about that uh, in your first experimentation and see how it goes so thank you so much for joining me this morning uh, I hope you enjoyed this uh, segment um, please give me a thumbs up down below and leave any comments you have for me about using cloches using forcing pots have you done this have you done it with other plants uh, that I didn't mention here obviously cloches I'm sure you have if you've, you've used them but what about forcing pots or are, are there other uh, plants that you could imagine using forcing pot for one idea I have and I've actually experimented with this a little bit in the past and it's worked all right is hostas because uh, I need to usually pile up a whole bunch of leaves and things over my hostas to make sure that they grow long enough uh, shoots in order to be worth um, worth harvesting before they start leafing out because they're a whole lot better before they start leafing out in terms of flavor I've used leaves in the past but I've also used uh, forcing pots over those 
Uh, so that's another one to experiment with. Uh, and if you've got a big hosta bush, they're very, very tough. So you can probably do that, uh, I say bush, but you know, a big hosta plant uh, that is growing and you can get that over before it starts to shoot up those shoots in the spring. Just keep it over for a week or two and pull it off, harvest some of those shoots, and then let it go. And uh, I'm sure that it will grow up just fine and come right back. But in the meantime, you will have enjoyed some nice blanched hosta shoots, which uh, will be really tasty. I, I guarantee the first time you try them, you're going to say, why, do, why have I been doing this uh, for a lot longer? But anyway, hope you enjoyed this segment. Um, look forward to hearing from you. Also, please do check out the Food Forest Garden Club at foodforestgardenclub.org. We're having a great time getting together on our chat sessions and our Zoom calls and sharing stuff. There's sharing going on every week. People who have extra stuff and are willing to share it with other members. And so we're sending things back and forth. Some of us who live close enough are just driving and picking it up. But anyway, uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you there, but definitely look forward to hearing your comments below. In the meantime, please try and get outside and enjoy some of the sunlight.